it's Virginia back again <laughs> at the Ella farm um, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about lock spinning but using a core spun uh, technique to spin your locks a little bit different than just the regular lock spinning which you don't use any additional um, fiber so here I have my wheel set up I have a piece of this would be my core fiber and it's a very non-twisted, very sort of dead fiber. It's got a lot of bump in it, a lot of nubble in it, which is really good because it will help you to catch your fiber. A lot of folks like to use a mohair or a boucle. Uh, it should be a strong fiber so that when you're working with it, you don't get frustrated when it snaps on you. Um, and the more it has little areas to grab hold of, the better because we're going to be wrapping it. Okay attached my, uh, my yarn. I'm going to take a handful of fiber and I'm going to separate a little bit out and we're going to take just a little bit that has a lot of fibery edges to it. I'm going to start spinning in a clockwise direction and I'm going to gather quite a bit of twist into my yarn. I have my uh, wheel set so that it does pull in but it pulls in uh, sort of at a, a light, lighter rate so that I can get some twist on this. I don't want it pulling it out of my hands as I'm trying to get the twist in here. When I have enough twist here in my my core yarn, I'm going to add, just going to hold these fibers right here and you'll see there as the twist, as enough twist gets in there, these fibers start to catch. And as they start to catch, they start to wrap around the core fiber and that's really all there is to core spinning but it it's a different technique than you're used to if you're uh, doing this for the first time and you're used to pulling you know having something that you're drafting here and worrying about what it looks like in this section here you're just telling yourself that you're going to allow this to wrap around this piece of yarn and as the wheel spins the yarn it actually grabs this and we'll wrap it right around. You're just letting it wrap. So I'm watching this area as I'm letting go and feeding my locks in and seeing what it looks like. And when I think it's filled or I like the way it looks, I'm allowing it to feed in. You do have to do a little bit of drafting, uh, particularly at first because you want to be comfortable with what you're letting feed on. And, and that's going to be a bit of a trick at first because you're going to feel like uh, it's too big or it's too bulky or it's not smooth or it's not straight or you don't have control and you know what it's okay uh, once you get the feel for holding this at a right angle and letting it wrap around your yarn that you're using for your core there's really very it, it's very forgiving and it gives you an awful lot of room to play with I like to use my my pointer to just kind of hold on to what's there and help guide it onto the onto the yarn. Um, right right here I'm pinching because see how there's not much on there? It looks like there's not much fiber going to go on. I'm, I'm going to pinch some of this with my finger right here so that it holds it as the, fi as the yarn's being turned. It will catch and it will begin to pull as, it, as this catches onto the yarn and the yarn is twisting. It will begin to actually pull this up into a draft and you'll feel that in your hand and you'll start to think, great, it's caught. That's wonderful. I'm going to draft it a little bit, smooth it out, and let it feed on. Draft it a little bit, let it feed on. Draft it a little bit, let it feed on. I like to hook with my finger as I'm drafting. I like to hold it, pinch it here, and draft away from my finger. Uh, depending on the fiber or what you're using or how you want it to end up, sometimes you, you can just draft directly from the from the feet itself. Uh, this fiber needs a little bit of help because it's a little sticky. But you can see how I'm, I'm really trying not to, con to be too concerned with um, trying to over manipulate how it goes on. I'm just holding it at about 90 degrees, I'm spinning very slowly, pumping very sm slowly with my feet, and allowing this to just roll on there. And it rolls on in a very haphazard way very soft. I don't have a lot of twist. It's not, you don't have to panic too much and get it all twisty. Um, if you back it off a little bit, you'll see, you know, how attractive that is, how, how the locks have been wrapped around the core thread. And that's why it's called core spinning. It's really, uh, 
you know, as simple as that. It may take you a little bit of time just to get the feel. Um, and it's like anything else. Don't give up. It's really simple. You can do it very easily. Uh, I know you can, and you'll love to do it with locks because locks are so much fun to work with. And there's so many wonderful fibers out there. And, um, you know, I tend to uh, want to do everything with locks because uh, here we raise Teeswaters and Wensleydales, and I'm just in love with their fiber. Uh, and there are many other great fiber animals uh, and breeds that you can play with as well. Again, you just have your fiber, have your core, start to twist, put a little piece on, and it will grab. But you have to trust it will grab. And when it grabs, it starts to turn. And because it's turning and spinning, it will grab your yarn and wrap it around. It, it, it also, I think, it allows you to see the beauty of the colors and the beauty of the fiber itself from the wrapping part. If you twist it traditionally, more like this, more like a lock spun, it also is beautiful, but you can see it, it, it doesn't, because you're not wrapping it, you can't see the fiber line up. And if for some reason, I, I just think the, the luster and the shape and the integrity of the curl are so much fun to play with this way. And again, I'm a very light tension. I do have a little twist there, enough to pull. So if I do let go, it'll twist down here a little bit, but not a lot. You, know, you don't have to hold it terribly tightly. So let me just do that again. And we'll spin a little bit more. See how some of those gorgeous little shapes and curls and all that sheen just goes right into that, right into that yarn. I just love it. Uh, you will love it. It's very relaxing, very creative. Um, you can leave this yarn as a single. Uh, it will be a little more stable and a little more durable, uh, a little more balanced if you ply it. You can ply it upon itself. You can ply it with uh, almost anything. It's you know, totally up to you. Uh, something shiny and thin uh, will, will kind of set off all the different textures that, that you have uh, as you core spin this. Um, you do get just very comfortable with it, and it becomes a very loose, uh, easy, relaxing method of spinning. It, it, it shouldn't feel, you know, terribly pressured or terribly tight, or uh, it really is very pleasant. And when you let go, as I say, you have a little, I have a little twist here, but not, not so much that it's going to cause a real difference. You just have to have enough twist, or nothing pulls in. You know, if I'm trying to teach lock spinning, or core spinning, excuse me, and I don't have any twist, when I put this fiber here, nothing's really happening. It's not catching. You have to build up quite a bit of twist to get it to catch. And it will. When it catches, you know, then you're, you're off to the races. You can just let it wrap around itself and lock in there and, you know, do all kinds of fabulous things. And you realize that you don't have to uh, smooth everything out all the time. And there you go. I mean, look at that. I just think that's great how it likes to... To play around in there. So please experiment, try, um, play with this. Uh, I know you're going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Bye.